Today we're going to be going over how to create three super easy to do cinematic overlays that are going to take your footage to the next level. The best part is that these can get applied to a number of different scenarios. They're super easy to use and extremely versatile. Let's hop right in. For this first easy cinematic overlay, I'm gonna show you how to create a gradient flare. So here we have this live action scene of this woman holding these neon lights and it looks cool already, but we can make this look so much better by going over to the timeline, adding in a brand new solid. The next thing that we're gonna do to this solid is add in an effect, go to generate, and then four color gradient. Now, the way that this effect works is that it creates a color in each of these corners and it gives us a positioning marker so that we can control this a little bit better. Now, if we change the blending mode from normal to screen, all of a sudden we can see the live action footage beneath that layer. Now, the way that the screen effect works is that the darker an area of an image is, the less that's gonna be visible. So if we wanted to make this pink corner not show up as pink, we could change this to black and we have what looks like the original footage right beneath it without any changes. We can also do the same for this blue section and make this one black as well. That way the light doesn't affect it as much. Another thing to note is that we can also reposition these markers. So you see how they're kind of closer to the image here. If we bring them further away, they affect it much less. So I can have these all the way off to the side. And rather than having a yellow, let's go with something like a purple and a green. So I think this looks pretty cool. Now, if we bring this a little bit closer here to this corner, bring this one over here, instantly we have a super, super easy gradient flare. Another cool thing about setting it up this way is that we can also animate these points however we like. So if I click on point one on the stopwatch icon and then on point two, I also click on the stopwatch icon. If we scrub forward in the timeline to where her hands move a little bit and I drag this down, down, then I bring this up and then move forward a little bit more in the timeline. Do the same thing, drag this so it looks like it's matching a little bit where those neon bar lights are. And we hit play. I think this looks pretty cool. Now, if you wanted this to affect the scene a little bit better, we can also go into effect, stylize, and then add in a glow effect. If we lower down the threshold, increase the radius, change the glow intensity a little bit, duplicate this, raise up the threshold, lower down the radius, we can start to see some pretty interesting effects happening right here. So here it is again, the basic base footage still looks good, but it's relatively easy to add a cinematic or a moody flare to this. Now, if we think that these look a little bit too bright, what we can do is go into the opacity by pressing T on our keyboard, lowering this down a little bit so that the effect looks much more subtle, but still adds in that level of pop to our footage. Here is what that looks like. Next up, we're gonna make a noise and grain overlay. So here we have this base footage. It looks a bit cyberpunky, but one of the things I don't like about it is that it's just so crisp and clean. It looks like it was shot on a very professional cinematic camera. And for the scene, it just doesn't mesh well. So what we can do is actually go in, create a brand new adjustment layer. And then we're gonna go to effects by right clicking on that layer. And under noise and grain, we're gonna go all the way up to add grain. Now you're gonna get this little box here in the center. And this is actually the only area where the grain is because right now we're in viewing preview mode. So if we change this from preview mode to final output, you can see that getting applied to the rest of the image. The reason why it defaults to preview mode is just because some computers can't handle that extra processing. So for a faster workflow, you could use preview, but you're not gonna get the full image until you change it to final output. Now we could go in and tweak these settings manually. However, this effect comes with a bunch of really cool presets. And I think one of my favorites is the Eastman color negative two, which is right here at the top. Now, all of a sudden, if we zoom into this image, we have all of these noisy artifacts going on. It's not so terrible that the image is blurry and it's it's not too subtle to where we can't even tell what's going on. So instantly, this is what it looks like when we have that effect applied. What's really cool is that there is all this nice movement happening in the blacks as well as in the white areas of this image. Now, since this has been applied to an adjustment layer, you could in theory add this to just about any scene and all of a sudden you have an image that looks like it came out of a grungier sci-fi movie. Now, I like this overlay because not only does it only take just about one effect, but it's so simple without removing that quality 
quality in the image. If anything, it's just adding a bit more details, even though it is introducing some noise into this. Okay, and then going into our last easy overlay, here we have a pixel retro overlay. So let's say you have a footage shot in 4K like this clip that we have here. This is a retro sci-fi scene, yet it looks like it was filmed in today's times with a ultra high resolution camera. So the easiest way to pixelate this image would be to create a brand new adjustment layer. And then on that adjustment layer, we want to go to effect, stylize, and then mosaic. Now mosaic essentially does what most people would assume pixelating an image does, which is it creates these little blocks of color representative of where that image was. So by default, it's set to 10 by 10 blocks, which is super, super low resolution. You can hardly tell what's going on. But if we crank this up to something like 150 by 150, all of a sudden you can see the image pop up. And if you want to play around with this a little bit more, you can actually change the amounts. So let's say the vertical blocks are only 10 and the horizontal blocks are 150 or something super insane. Now it looks like we're looking at an image on a messed up computer screen. I'm going to set these both though to 150 because I still want to be able to tell that the actor is there, but I do want to make this look like it wasn't shot in today's times, especially if we're going to be overlaying this clip on something like an older television screen later on. Now the pixelation is just one part of this. So another way that we can take this a step further without doing too much is by adding in a glow effect and then customizing the threshold so that it affects the image in a way that makes this look more like bloom than a traditional glow. So I'm going to lower down this threshold, raise this up a bit, increase the intensity. And then if I duplicate this, vary those as well by either increasing or lowering the threshold, increasing the radius, and then turning the intensity down a huge amount. Let's just make it 0.1. And so here is what that final result of that image looks like. So as you can see, there are a lot of simple and easy ways to make footage look more cinematic or have a different tone than how it was originally shot just by using After Effects and a couple effects built into it. However, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many more effects that you can use After Effects for. In fact, we cover the top 30 best effects built right into After Effects no plugins needed. And we also talk about a number of their use cases so that you can start incorporating them into projects of your own. If you want to check out that video, I highly recommend you click this right here, or you can go ahead and see one of the videos that YouTube recommends for you. If you enjoyed this video, hope you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe and ding that notification bell so you don't miss out. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope to catch you in the next one. Peace.